It's what it comes down to is you've got two choices. Unfortunately, both of them are imaginary. You've got a choice of moving into somewhere smaller, if you're lucky, you get offered that choice. You don't automatically even get offered that. In fact, in most cases, there isn't smaller accommodation for people to move to. And in any case, why should people have to move out of the homes that they've lived in, in some cases, for decades? Um, why should they have to move away from the families, the lives that they've established in those places, the neighbours, the friends, those communities? People shouldn't have to move out of their homes. And there isn't anywhere for them to move to. So it's an imaginary choice. Or failing that, they can take the choice of paying an extra, roughly £15 a week, out of money that they haven't got. So that's imaginary too. The, so that's what the bedroom tax comes down to. The response of various people to this has not really covered them in glory, I have to say. The housing associations who are supposed to be social organisations and who are supposed to be <coughs> registered charities have not really kicked up very much fuss. They have not really done very much to defend and assist the tenants. Um, at the ha Whitefriars Housing Office, just round the corner from here, there was a massive poster in their front window that I noticed at Christmas and there was a, a big photograph of a family sitting in modest comfort and it said, uh, don't spend too much this Christmas, your rent comes first. <laughs> well, it does if you're a landlord, but it doesn't <laughs> for most people, does it? That's what they're like. Nationally, the Labour Party, and I say this um, with the greatest of respect to Labour Party people here tonight, who I recognise a few of, but... Um, the Labour Party has promised to abolish the bedroom tax from the time of the election, and that's good, but that's in a minimum of 14, 15, 16 months' time. Doesn't help people now. I wish they'd said that they would reimburse local authorities for meeting all the needs of those people who are left short at the present. It also has to be said that Labour, it took Labour until September to come out with that policy, and that, so we had to wait six months for that. We had to wait several deaths for that. Some of you here will recall the case of a woman from Birmingham, Stephanie Bottrell, who left a note to say that it was the bedroom tax that had finished things off, was the last straw, and walked out of her house, crossed the fence, and walked in front of the first truck on the M6. Um, there was also a gentleman in Liverpool who was uh, so desperate as to, to end things. It's a shame it took that, and it's a shame that it also followed the movement in opinion polls. Because to start with, about 40% of people only were opposed to the bedroom tax. When people started to hear what its real implications were, that went up considerably. So that followed on from that. Locally, um, Coventry City Council has not been the worst, but they have little um, role in pursuing this. What they have got a role in is distributing some money that was given out by the government to uh, ease the uh, introduction of the bedroom tax. So this is called a discretionary housing payment. And I was looking at the discretionary housing payment application form, and I have to say that um, the person who drew it up was clearly under a misapprehension. They'd clearly been told that uh, any discretionary housing payments that were going to come out in Coventry were going to be deducted from their own salary. So there's a bit of a training need there, I think, for you know any any um, unison training uh, learning reps. So I recognise one or two of. Um, that's how hard it is. It was as if they'd have to pay it out of their own pocket. Terrible. Now. What have we done about it? We've had a campaign in Coventry for a good year now. We've had five uh, good public meetings. We've had several um, lobbies and demonstrations. We maintain a Facebook page, Coventry Against the Bedroom Tax, where you keep everything up to date and answer questions that come in. 
we've had questions from all over the country actually and um, Eleanor Lisney is one person who sometimes posts things and passes on links and so on and that's great. We've also taken up in particular personal cases with this thing. We've gone through those, anyone who's come to us. Uh, we've gone to court with people, we've sat down and advised people, we've won in at least one case, uh, we won, someone's got the whole of their arrears of the bedroom tax paid off under the pre-1996 uh, issue, which there isn't time to go into now. Um, we've also got people discretionary housing payments and so forth. Um, I was in court on Tuesday with the gentleman and we weren't totally successful but we were able to at least suspend his being evicted for a further eight weeks. When all those things have been tried and um, if they not succeed however, our intention has always been, we made this very clear, is that when, if and when bailiffs come to throw people out of their houses, we will be there to resist that. This was done during the poll tax quite successfully. It's been done several times in the UK, particularly in Scotland, already over this issue. And what we mean by that is we have a big list of people who volunteered. When we know there's an eviction coming up, we all turn up and we stand peacefully outside the front door. The bailiffs have no power to force a way in. The police can't help them. Police won't help them. If the bailiffs cause trouble, we'll call the police. We'll call the police. That form of direct action is what's necessary in the end, and we'll do that. So, that's what we're doing. If you know anybody who's affected by the bedroom tax, please do tell them to come to us via the Facebook page or whatever, um, and we will do our utmost to help them. And secondly, if you're up for some peaceful direct action to defend, help defend people, then give us our details, um, We've got a, a sign-up sheet uh, uh, somebody at the back there has, has got, so we can take your details from that. So there's two practical things you can do to help us. So please do join us in defending working-class people in Coventry. Thank you very much. <laughs>